Bonjour tout le monde! This is Sandy, and yes, I am in Paris. Oh my gosh, I'm in Paris as this video is uploading. Very excited about that. And I wanted to show you my Peerless watercolors that I took with me. I made this little booklet for them, and I thought I'd show you that before I get started on the video. They come in these two, two by two little squares of paper cardstock, and the paint is on them. And so you just touch the brush to them and pick up the paint. I made little chips. I cut out circles and then put half circles with glue dots onto each one with the actual color because you can see that they don't actually look like what the color is on the piece of paper itself. So some of them had a little bigger than a 2x2 two two square so I just left those little bits. I didn't want to throw away all that paint and I left them in the little pockets with each one of the colors. I've arranged them in a roughly rainbow order so I have all my reds together, purples together, that kind of thing. And I don't know color names for them. There's probably a booklet somewhere that tells me what the color names are, but I just go by eye because now I can look at my little color chips. The little booklet I made myself. I took some scrap chipboard and cut it to, I think it's nine and a quarter by seven and a quarter, something like that. Whatever the size of your booklet is that you put them in, I will link you to all the supplies that I use for this in uh, the description down below. But I put brads in it and then put gaffer's tape over the back just to make sure it doesn't get stuck on anything in my suitcase. And then I painted the front in a similar way that I painted a couple of watercolor videos I did recently with flowers. I used a stencil and I traced it and then I was able to just paint in the leaves and things and paint a little fun background in them and add my Peerless watercolors text. I will never be doing text in watercolor again. That was a mess, but at least my book is somewhat decorated before my trip. I'm gonna give this girl, who is me, <laughs> a yellow dress. I don't have a yellow dress like this. Maybe I will find one in Paris while I'm there. I wanted to add some shadows, so I'm pretending the light is coming from the right hand side so all my shadows will be on the left and I decided I wanted to add some texture to her dress so I'm just adding it with various of the orange and yellow colors and then more and more water as time goes on and there was too much on there so I took a damp paper towel and just dabbed it off. Damp paper towel seems to take off more of it than not. And I'm coloring this by the way on Hero Arts letterpress cardstock. This is not watercolor paper but I like the texture of it it's you know it's really really super smooth so I can get the control that the control freak in me likes yeah <laughs> it doesn't do the splooge as well as watercolor paper but I'm putting some masking fluid on here in a couple of spots because I shot this video six times and they all came out terribly so I decided I was going to use this masking fluid this time and it has an, a tiny nib and you could put the the lid nib back into the dispensing nib to keep the two of them from gumming up the works. One of the reasons I'm using the Peerless watercolors on this is that Peerless has some good flesh tones, just a couple different ones, and a lot of my other watercolor sets don't, which is fine because I don't seem to color people. This is my first attempt at coloring a stamp and like a, a real person type stamp. Um, not just flowers and things so there was a little more stress involved in this that might be why it took me so many tries to get one that came out okay but I'm using my normal techniques of using purple for my shadows that seemed to work in watercolor just like it does with my Copics I gave her or me some really 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 red hair really 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 red and <laughs> I'm wishing that I was young enough to have color color my hair quite that red but I don't think I should do that at my age. I decided to make the, you know, originally I was I was doing the little portfolio and her jacket in, in black, but trying them in black just made them really stand out on the card too much, so I'm putting purple there instead of black, at least for an undercoat. And then I decided I was going to add my masking fluid as well for the Eiffel Tower and put that in there so that I could do my sky right over it. That's another area that I kept goofing up before because I kept goofing up not leaving enough space for the the Eiffel Tower and things. So this will reserve that space because it's going to mask it out and I can paint right over top of it. So I'm testing the masking fluid inner jacket and it's all nice and dry now. It, I shouldn't say nice and dry, it stays tacky so when you touch it it'll be tacky but as long as it doesn't like come back up on your finger and pull up 
when you touch it, then it's usually pretty, pretty much dry enough to paint with. So I'm dabbing off some color and I'm going to add some black to it, but I wanted just some good purple underneath of it to make sure I have a little more color in the image and not just, you know, really, really dark, harsh black. But I do fight with the blacks. And maybe it's because watercolor isn't supposed to have like really rich blacks or something. I'm used to my Copics. It's, it's taken me a lot to go through this watercolor exercise that I've been going through for the last couple months. You guys are only aware of recent weeks of it but I've been practicing for quite some time getting ready for this trip since I couldn't take my Copics with me. They're both too expensive and too bulky to carry with, and I'd also would need so many reinkers from coloring for two weeks that I thought there's just no way. So I can bring several different types of watercolor and watercolor papers and little sketchbooks and things, so I figured that would be easier to travel with. But I needed to learn how to paint watercolor first. So here I'm, you can just watch me fuss back and forth every time I add the black and then remove the black and add the black and remove the black. Yeah, it is how it goes, right? Here's some uh, sky being added with a really big brush. And speaking of brushes, people have been asking me what brushes I'm using. I'm kind of settling toward these Princeton Neptune brushes. They seem to work the best, but I have been wrecking several brushes and I finally found out why I went to my art store and I was like why are my brushes not lasting? They gave me this little brochure that says you should store your brushes horizontally. So first you want to get them out of the water. Don't leave them in your water jar. You want to get them out of the water and then you know get as much of the water out as you can by squeezing you know with a with a rag or paper towel or whatever and then dry them horizontally. And I also still recommend as I have before keeping them um, in those little plastic cases. If, if you have that plastic nib case, then it's just going to keep you from making a mess of your nib. I did get a little brush carrier, and I will link you to that in the description as well, because the brush carrier I think is going to help me to not wreck brushes quite so much anymore, but eventually I will do some kind of, you know, my best practices, recommendations, whatever, on doing some watercolor stuff once I have more experience. I, this is all in the last couple months, so I can tell you what I've learned so far, but I by no means am any kind of an expert. So as I put the ground in here, <laughs> I noticed a lot of color was pooling up around the bottom of her dress. And I'm going to add more green in there, so I decided to leave it, but I couldn't seem to get that pooling to stop. And then there was a fast forward motion there. I let it dry while I went to answer the door. And I came back and I had those big white, whitish splooges in the grass. Yikes! So I will get to finish that. That's what I get for answering the door, right? So I started peeling up right there in that corner, right where you see I'm painting right now. That's where it was a little bit wet when I removed that masking fluid with the, the uh, gum eraser. And unfortunately that pulled up the surface of the papers, but I'm going to be adding bushes in there. So I decided I was going to just leave it and not shoot this video yet one more time because I think this is enough times. This is, you know, this is from a newbie, just so you know. Don't, don't leave me all the hate comments for my craziness that I'm doing here. All right. Moving on to the Eiffel Tower, I wanted it to be kind of soft and in the background because I wanted her, of course, to pop, which is going to happen naturally since she has an outline because she's a stamped image and the rest of it is not. But I wanted to add enough depth as well that it kind of looks semi-realistic. So I've started adding brown and then this what that I'm adding right now is the darker purple, like the, the duller purple color. And I started really liking that. It was like. And then I accidentally pulled in the brighter, redder purple. And I had a little bit of that on my brush and I was like, wait a minute, I kind of like that. I kind of like that purple Eiffel Tower. So I added more and I just kept adding more. So I hope the Eiffel Tower looks a little purple when I get there. <laughs> we will see how that goes, whether or not I've gone off on a crazy limb here. But it, my brush was dry enough that I think I didn't have enough on it to the color back out so I added some green and that tended to dull a little bit of that purple as well. So it's an almost complementary color that sort of just knocked that color back so it's not quite as crazy bright. So I added a little more texture around the areas where I pulled up some of that paper just to mask that a little bit 
and then added a green shadow, removed some of that, and then put some purple over it, so that dulled that down as well. To finish off my card, I just put it on some black cardstock with a purple layer and lined the inside and left it nice and simple. I hope you've learned something from this today, even if it is what not to do, but I'm trying to share as I learn and maybe it was of some assistance to all of you. Here are two more watercolor -y videos if you'd like to check out some more of my work and maybe learn something else. In the meantime, ayez une très belle journée aujourd'hui. Au revoir!